Welcome to our worship service today. My name is Chaplain Malcolm and I'm one of the chaplains at Wesley Mission Queensland. And it's always an honour and a privilege to lead our worship. Let us prepare to worship God. We light the Christ candle as an acknowledgement that Christ is the light of the world and in him there is no darkness. We pay respects to the local custodians of this land and we honour their elders past, present and future. Let's come before God in our call to worship. This day we gather in the name of God, three in one and one in three. Let us worship God the Creator, Christ the Saviour of the world and the Spirit bringer of life. Let us pray. Holy, holy God, three in one and one in three, come in the fullness of your being to guide us in our worship. Open our hearts and minds to your presence. Censor us in the teachings of Christ, the wisdom of your spirit, and the renewing of your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join together in singing our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. i 
Let us come before God in our prayer of invocation and confession. Let us pray. O God, you are at the heart of creation. Your word brings life into being, and your peace gives living its fulfillment. Your spirit unites us into your Son. We draw near seeking your love in our hearts, your wisdom, your wisdom in our minds, and your power in our lives. Receive us with grace in the name of your Son. Lord Jesus, you send us into the world, but we confess that our vision is narrow. You give us clear commandments, but we pretend not to understand them. You promise to be with us always, but we ignore your presence and follow our own way. Forgive us, give us fresh vision, and restore us to your way, we pray. Amen. A declaration of forgiveness. In Christ, God came to open the ways to abundant and eternal life. This is our inheritance, to be people of forgiveness. So I declare that our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in singing our next hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Let us hear the word of God. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, 
to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be to honour and serve you, Lord. Speak to us as we, your children, listen. Amen. Go out and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go out and make disciples of all nations. In so many ways over the past couple of thousand years, we have attempted to do this. And so very many times we have got it wrong. Sometimes I wonder how God could entrust us with such a huge task and how he doesn't think that for sure we are going to make a mess of things and how often we have in fact done that. Look at our history as a church. We have struggled all the way through. But our question is, how do we do it? How do we make genuine disciples of all the nations? I guess for me, there are three points that jump out at me from the reading. The first thing is that you need to live it. You need to live it just like Jesus lived his faith, even unto death. A great All Black, a great rugby player, an All Black happens to be, is someone that I've always looked up to in sports growing up as a young person. He's still alive today and still living his life as a disciple of Christ. As he came through the All Blacks and playing for the All Blacks, he had one rule that he said to the All Blacks, there's one thing that I, can, that I can't do is that I can't play on the Sabbath. I will never play on my Sabbath because my Sabbath is the day when I give worship to God and I rest. This was something that was never unheard of, never done before. And in most cases, if you're not willing to play a game when you're asked to play, usually your chances of being in the All Blacks are very, or being in the rugby team, so to speak, are very minimal. However, Sir Michael Jones, of the All Blacks in New Zealand, played numbers of tests and played a couple of World Cups and played for a very long time. In fact, his skill base was so amazing that he was called probably one of the greatest flankers to ever play the game. But he was an example to me of someone who lived it. His faith in Jesus Christ and his discipleship came first above all things even far beyond of being an all black. The next thing that I get from this reading is that everyone in their own time, everyone in their own time. Sometimes we want to see things happen instantly. We think that we should be able to convince people to become followers of Jesus, but we read in this passage that even though the 11 were with him, the entire journey of his ministry, they even had some doubts themselves. And they'd seen him die, and they were now looking and engaging with the risen Christ, but still had doubts. Church history tells us, though, that not one of the 11 fell away. We know that in their own time, they followed him and became disciple makers just as Jesus was to them. 
Sometimes we need just to be patient. And the third thing I see is that it relies on open and honest relationship. It relies on an open and honest relationship. Jesus gave this commission to the 11 closest friends ahead on the earth. He didn't call the multitudes to witness his ascension. And he didn't create a lot of hype so that heaps of people were involved. He called his closest and dearest. Those who he knew and those who knew him well. Those who had spent a long time with him in strong relationship. Sometimes we get carried away and we think that the Great Commission is for us to go individually out and take it to the world. But it's okay just to start with those you connect with each day. Making disciples of all nations doesn't have to be as hard as we think. Because part of all the nations is a little corner of the world in which you and I live every day. So remember, people are watching how we live and how we treat others. Make your life something that others will want to follow. And if we live our lives following the way Jesus lived and loved, our lives will be a huge beacon of grace and kindness, patience, and genuine loving. We don't need to push faith down people's throats, but pray for people. Pray for people and don't give up on people just because you don't see the fruit bearing quickly. And lastly, do it in relationship. Do it in relationship. Live life as a disciple of Christ alongside the lives of the people you want to make disciples of Christ. Live honest. Be encouraging when encouragement is needed. Listen when an ear is needed. Be sacrificial in living. There is a saying that it's not how big a gift or an act of kindness is, but really what matters is the love that motivates it and the attitude that drives it. A small act, a smile, or even a simple thank you, or waiting patiently, or word of encouragement, maybe the small seed that is needed to start faith growing in the heart of a new disciple. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together and sing our next hymn, The Servant Song.
at his feet The scars that speak of sacrifice Hands that flung stars into space To cruel nails surrender This is our God, the servant's King us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. So let us learn how to serve. Let's join together in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Where there is conflict between nations and within nations, where people live in fear of the bullet and the bomb, when parents weep for children who have been killed, God of peace, may your peace be known. In homes filled with anger, cruelty and neglect, where there are no safe places, where poverty and addiction bring suffering and pain. God of peace, may your peace be known. To those whose minds are tormented by depression, to those who hold on, on life as fragile, to those whose lives are filled with stress, God of peace, May your peace be known. To those who are nearing the end of life, to those who love and care for them, God of peace, may your peace be known. May your peace be known to us, and may we be the bearers of your peace in our world. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer in the, wor in the words of our Saviour that gave us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together and sing our final hymn, Take My Life. Say 
our words of mission and blessing. As we go, may we be empowered to be bearers of truth, creators of justice, and sources of light and hope that in all things God may be glorified. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.